glasses on. We've got Friday night treats, and everybody look at the crazy, crazy camera up there. I don't think they can see that. When was an alien probe? Are we talking alien probes tonight? Tonight, oh. we are here to discuss <laughs> alien probes amongst other things. Alien sex, what's the other line of that? Um, yes. Yeah. So, little Katy Perry. Little Katy Perry. We're here to talk about health benefits of sex and orgasms. So we can talk about it because Dr. Mike's mom told him that there's no way whatsoever she's going to be watching tonight. So now we can actually just go for it. Works for me. And we'll find out if I get an extra back call out, but we'll see. I was also using confident. the innuendo of go for it. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're welcome for that one. <laughs> So, welcome everybody to another fun Friday at Functionize. We are here to talk about the health benefits of sex and orgasms. And if you're not doing it right, it could be very detrimental to your health. If you're not doing it at all, it's detrimental to your health. Some people don't want doing it at all. <laughs> Dr. Brandon. I'm not, you're not so I'm not in the audience tonight. Yes, we brought the audience in with us. So, Dr. Mike, yes. why should an individual partake in the activity of sexual intercourse? Well, let's first go with the reasons why not to. Okay, next topic, we're done. So, um, there's a lot of good reasons for it. I mean, outside, it's just a lot of fun, and the whole reproductive part, that would be necessary to reproduce. Um, Actually, I do want to talk about a few times why not to do it. Uh, really, there aren't too many times where I think you shouldn't, but it is exercise. I mean, if you do it right, it's exercise. Uh, there you track is... it on your fitness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, you can have a lot of calories burned if you're doing it for like six hours. Yeah. <laughs> it adds up, which we'll get into a little bit. But really, it's a health thing. If you're not able to exercise, then you probably want to rethink the way you're having I'm not going to say you don't have it. There's different the ways. The way you're work. having it? Like yes. hanging from the ceiling? Position of the person that has poor health in question. So one of 200 men that have heart attacks, one of those 200 had it during sex. So, I mean, there's less uh, aggressive positions for the guy where it's not going to get as uh, ringy on the heart rate. Um, Girls on top. There you go. Okay. As long as the guy can control not moving on the bottom. Okay. Control yeah. not moving. So, he has to just. Lay there. Be the plan. Oh. Get a popsicle stick, wrap some tape around it, and just lie there. I don't know if that's going to go over well. If it's that method or hard to tell, that's a hard question. Oh, we're going to skip that one. Why? So. <laughs> Why would you wait? Yeah, you, it just has a heart attack. Um, no, I mean, if a girl just lays there, what the crap? I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. okay. Wiggle the bone. Yeah. Wiggle the bone. <laughs> <laughs> so. It is a contact sport, maybe a combat sport, depending on what you're into. Um, so, I mean, yeah, there we'll are, get into some of those injuries. <laughs> <laughs> so there are injuries that come with it. Uh, there are very common ones that, I mean, odds are all of us have had at least one of these happen before. Are, are you going to keep jiggling that until something happens? I'm listening. <laughs> uh, so some of those common injuries. One is, what's well, a vaginal tear? They happen with elaborate repetition. Da, 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 da. Injuries and just a lot of work. It's common. Nothing I have to worry too much about. So we'll ask Jim. I'm not sure if he had anything to do with that one either. Um, was that a question or are you just <laughs> trying to hit me and uh, move on before I hit you? A lot of sex can be. Well, I mean, I'm not into that, but we can get that. Yeah, it does. It does. Very common. The sword in it for anything is. Isn't very that common. guy's like well, thing? Like, just, yeah, she can't just, walk. She's sore. Is that not supposed to be a good thing? Not when the next day she can't be. Isn't that a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> more lube? Always more lube. Um, another Rock big one. Right. Have more heart sex, just use more lube. Okay, right. Moving on. There's a whole cold of all these injuries, but yeah, I, I'm on your side on that one. <laughs> Obviously, um, any care could lead to an infection down the road, right? It does. I mean, so, just like any injury, make sure it's clean and just. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then you would. It would fall off afterward if you got a bad enough infection. Right? Okay. Doctor? Cool. <laughs> in, in theory, it does. All right. Nothing 
to try to uh, do an experiment on. Uh, so probably the most common injury is acute muscle spasms. Hamstrings, feet, you can go anything from trying to hide it to someone's falling off on the floor. Uh, again, something you probably all experience and just try to push through it. Okay, <laughs> muscle spasms <laughs> happen. Mm. Ow, ow, what the? What happened? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Making funny faces. You might get stuck in an awkward position. Let's just push your way out of it. <laughs> So you get stuff that's another common injury, so things getting lost. Lost. Usually in women. Yeah. Okay, uh, I cannot that happen. <laughs> Can you go on <laughs> that this one? I easily could. Should I is the other question. Uh, no, this is very common. Things get lost. So you bring condoms, toys, anything that might be used. I can't imagine too many accidental things, but people do some interesting things, whatever you do. Take inventory. Take inventory. <laughs> <laughs> you bring out your toys, make sure you put them away. We're we'll missing pieces afterwards, yeah. I like how you uh, keep up the idea of rug burns. Oh, no, that's the next one. Uh -huh. I know about things getting lost when I jump. Mm -hmm. No, rug burns, that's outside of the uh, spasm, but probably the next most common one. We'll call it rug burns, some sort of rash burn. <laughs> Not rash, we'll go with Cars and feet. Cars. Mm -hmm. Cars, office room floors, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Couches, futons, anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see. Clothes, so yeah. Leather burns. Leather. Uh, there you go. Front seats of cars and stuff like that. Back seats and, mm -hmm. So things to be cautious about. Materials. Obviously, again, these can get infected. Yes. And then that would not be a good time. Mm -hmm. Keep it clean so you can see your story. Got to keep it nice. What else you got? What what other reasons? Back pain. That's again, if it happens, just be uh, like playing a sport. I'm never gonna say I'm one of the last people say don't play sport due to an injury. Same case here. So if something happens, back pain. Whatever. You have back pain. Make sure you're having sex with a chiropractor. There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Quick little cracking in the middle of it. Stretch it out. So uh, then the other big one is not very common, but Remember when I first heard about the idea of a penis fracture? I, I know, then you saw penis. pictures and it was awful. I didn't look for pictures. I didn't look either, but you know who I'm talking about, which doctor oh, like yes. to show those pictures, and we all know it was his. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's Yes, funny. so. We have all, yeah. Now he's trying to smack me, but you know it is a fact that he had his photos up for the class to see. I don't remember the penis fracture one, however, it does seem it wasn't there and I blocked that out. But no, yeah, we all start blocking it out after a while. Uh -huh. um, so fracture is a real thing, and it's kind of just known on the term, because there's no bone, nothing really raised. Uh, it's like a bone. It's <laughs> <laughs> She's sober. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. <laughs> Tissue tears can no longer endure. For now. <laughs> you turn into a purple eggplant. It's pretty much what happens. And then a purple eggplant. I picked up my purple shirt. All you right. did. For penis fractures, you represent <laughs> I've never caused that. No. <laughs> that one? So we're talking about uh, sex and exercise, right? Yes. So let's get a little bit more. Why is sex a good form of exercise? Um, and do you also recommend the high intensity interval method or the long slow cardio method? Oh, and why? Um, oh, let's. <laughs> Why'd you ask that? Because it kind of actually, I'd say it actually depends more on what the woman thinks. Uh, I'll fill that one on there. I prefer the high intensity interval. Double up. Do you prefer the uh, sex for actual exercise in this case, or are you kind of talking about it as like it is a form of exercise? You know what the difference I'm talking about? Mean? Like, all right, I need to get my work out of today. Woman, get over here. Or, um, you know, hey, just look, I'm in better shape because I am regularly active with my awesome other. So it certainly counts as exercise either way, but. I'm Sure, you got to exercise you know, at least uh, you know, three to five times a week, 30 to 60 minutes. I can, for sure. Put a cardio regimen. I mean, it's just a cardio session. And then you can put in, like, uh, I'm sure you've heard this, athletes have debated a lot about should you have sex like for a couple of days of uh, the sport. Don't so, have uh, sex before a baseball game. Actually, mm -hmm. all science has proven it's not supposed to affect anybody. Science has so proven 28 <laughs> days is the optimal prime peak. If you would hold, for 28 days, 
right after that, you should have your best performance. And then after that, it kind of has that negative bell curve effect. So after that is where you want to have sex and then reload again and uh, to get all your energies elsewhere. So if you're planning on game seven of the playoffs, then that's where you want to fall if you're going to really get into specificity of that. And, um, so I mean, it's very much exercise. Calories burning. There isn't anything. I mean, I've actually asked that before. Of how many calories does it burn? And it, it just varies so much. The average is anywhere between it was like 75 to 300 calories per half hour. Again, it depends on a lot. Are we talking like should I post those bit bit? Um, <laughs> did you see that spike? It's like, it's like wow. We sleep was interrupted. We should uh, post our spikes. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, on that, yeah, it depends a lot. Of are you doing the low slow cardio approach? Are you lying there just waiting? Are you making or? love, or are you just work just kind of going for more. it? That's mm -hmm. just uh uh. Oh. This build-up has just been happening, and uh, that's not that long slow cardio, is it? And this is a, I don't want to say a fitness facility, it's not a fitness <laughs> facility, so but if you, if you notice what happens in most gyms or places where people exercise, there are more hormones floating around, there's more testosterone, there's more sex drive in yeah. atmospheres like that. So people are sweating, so pheromones are flying around. Exactly. So people that are fit have more sex because they want to because they're oozing, I need sex. So. Very true, actually. Yeah. The machismo is flowing. Mm -hmm. Pheromones are flowing. Testosterone is boosting both men and women. And therefore, if you like that smell of pheromone, well, mm -hmm. it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Not the type of pheromones that you find in the back of a magazine that are like oh, 50 bucks or 100 bucks that you just add your cologne. <laughs> That's called water. Yeah, so it's exercise. So, Build your cardiovascular endurance. And muscle tone. Pelvic yes. Is a huge one, which we'll be actually getting that a little bit. All right. Let's, Let's just discuss stuff. some stats a little bit here. Okay. What's the average? Average times uh, per week, per month? So average times of having sex per week is about 1.6. One, so one and a half hours. For what age? That's Somebody that has been married for like 50 years? Marriage actually has shown statistically not to make a difference. People seem to use that or say it. I don't know if that has to do with other people, not just the person you're married to, uh, which definitely would play different on some statistics. But 1.6 times a week. They show the biggest difference of how often or how little people have sex is really age. The older people get really after about 40-ish, it seems to go down, mostly due to sex drive. Otherwise, it's just looking for the opportunity. But they have pretty decent sized studies of couples that were married at least 10 years and have kids and it really just came down to are you just making the opportunity or not. Um, that it might change wise. a little bit. Time, place, any of that, but as we're going to You might not have marathon sessions with three children running around, but that did not limit you from <laughs> having sex. <laughs> as you said, if you want to do something, have it. Okay, we got 20 seconds. Let's go for it before that door knocks. <laughs> That opportunity. <laughs> hey, you don't have to all the way through, but hey, you just want to be with somebody. Enough. You know what? Sometimes yeah. just the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing you're saying also over time is, especially in men, where testosterone goes down yes. gradually with age. As they get older, well, let's face it, guys will want it typically less. Yeah. And they don't, they're not typically these huge studs anymore in their 20s that are just raging losing with testosterone. At least in my experiences, it seems like guys that are on some form of testosterone replacement, they're getting those urges like they're in their 20s again. So they are in their 50s and 60s, and they are going they have a healthy sex drive. I mean, testosterone is one of the biggest factors of sex drive, and having sex increases your testosterone. So if you want to have a bigger sex drive and don't have it, it's not sex anyway. I mean, it will help increase the drive and everything with it. So again, it's testosterone levels is a big part of anti-aging. So it will help you, in theory, age slower by enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And there's some enjoying, yeah. other tips on testosterone what? boosting. I mean, you got sunlight, so shine your balls mm -hmm. in the sunlight, or use the laser behind Shantae right now to shine your balls when no one else is looking to boost your testosterone up to possibly 500%. 
Oh. When no one is looking back. Uh, Zinc levels are low, so therefore that can end up raising as well. You also have other herbs that can. Uh, You'll have people increase blood flow. That was relevant. You have niacin and B vitamins and blood flow. Uh, NOS contributors like uh, arginine, citrine, and so on. Mm -hmm. so, Maca actually doesn't increase any testosterone, and it does increase urge. And uh, the research behind maca is kind of, we don't know how it works, but it does work. It does work. So we're taking some guesses, but uh, it does work. So a organic maca um, daily has been shown to help with sex drive. And then again, you know, with testosterone levels are low, you no, can, you can you fake that. it all you want, but see a competent anti-aging professional in order to... Go for it. Yeah. Tomcat has also been shown to, oh, yeah, it's yeah, also in the ant, yeah. has been shown to boost the testosterone levels. Really, really, if you are deficient in a myriad of vitamins, minerals, um, rest, you know, if you're not sleeping at night, chances are you're not going to be ready to go. Your libido will go down. Yeah, yeah. If you get a good night's sleep, you may wake up with that out. Another thing that I'm sure you talked about is the low fat diet. No, I'll let you talk all about the low fat diet all you want. But the uh, getting a tan with, oh, yeah. with the peptides, mm -hmm. that stuff you it is actually created to um, for erectile dysfunction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys that do take the peptide uh, to get a tan uh, will wake up and have random erections You're white throughout the day. You. <laughs> The caveat is, you will get nauseous <laughs> upon <laughs> injection. <laughs> you'll be tan and you'll be rock hard. Yes. And, and the nausea will go away and then you can have your. I'm sorry, the name is Melanotan. Yes. Oh. I, I see a bunch of things popping up on Instagram. Melanotan is yeah. the answer. And it's legal to get. Yeah. So, what you were talking here oh, about. about uh, low fat diets. This is very common with middle aged males and they start trying to like, oh I want to lose weight, gotta get healthy, I want to feel young. And that's really hurting yourself trying to feel young by going low fat diet. The main part of most hormones, including testosterone, is cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And which you get from animal sources, fat sources. So a lot of times guys are trying to better their health by going low fat and then their pecker stops working. Pecker, pecker. The doctor said pecker. <laughs> Why the heck not? <laughs> Having a crap ton of fun here, people! <laughs> crap ton of fun! There's only so many... Uh, we'll just go on. Uh, Let's talk uh, about health. Okay. Why, why so, in the world does it improve your immunity, immune function, all this good stuff? Well, let's first talk about dosage. Alright? Dosage of sex? Of sex. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, answer the question. Don't need a prescription. <laughs> Don't need a prescription. <laughs> okay, that's why it's great exercise. It's free... That's like breathing. Um, you know, like, oh, I'm going to go and touch it. So touch for the health, buttons, honey. Touch the buttons. So for the health benefits we'll be talking about shortly, I will say the standard dose is once a week. <laughs> once a week. <laughs> once a week. <laughs> okay. So really, as long as you're having sex once a week, you get a lot of the health benefits we're going to talk about soon. Uh, That's why I never get sick. There is, no, oh, okay. there is no toxicity limit. So. Thank you, Lori D. Um, thank you. Lori, thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Appreciate you. So it doesn't matter. You can have really as much as you want as long as you're physically able to. You already have. There's only one exception to having uh, better benefits after more than once a week outside of cardiovascular components. We'll get to that in a little bit. So we're talking about normal or good sex. We're talking about uh, there's it's also a lot to be said about good, more than good health week. amount, <laughs> healthy. <laughs> Your toes are curling. It's going to happen more than once a week. Mm -hmm. If it's not, oh. that's actually Move good, on. good definition here on this one. We're talking about times per week, one to four times. It does actually better benefits if it goes throughout the week. So four times in one day does not count the same health wise as four times in a week. Fascinating. No, However, so don't four the four times in one day does not count the same as four times in one week. Correct. For health benefits outside of cardiovascular. Yeah, there's no reason not to do it. You're not going to have problems from it. 
But if you're trying to convince someone that it's for health, I think it's a vital one, but no, it's not going to make a huge difference. Public message, do not lie to somebody to be healthier <laughs> to have sex. If they fall for it, well, shame on them. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> <laughs> you live long if you sleep with me. <laughs> Not wow. <laughs> so, some health benefits of it. We'll start with a not sexy one of a cotton. I'm uh, done. <laughs> That's why it oh, will go one. down. <laughs> Just talking about that. Oh, the next one's even better because that's going to be menstruation. So the first time you're hearing cotton. He doesn't know that word. It doesn't exist. This conversation's about over. Oh, this is my favorite part of conversation with you. Saying you bodily fluids and you get all like this. Great. So let's <laughs> you're hearing incontinence, especially with women. Um, for those who don't know what this is, this is you're hearing earmuffs. Earmuffs. I'm holding things in. Earmuffs. <laughs> Very common post pregnancy oh, C sections, etc. Do your kegels. It's really that's really what it comes down to. It's Excess kegels, especially during Just squeeze your vagina. I mean, come on. You got one, you want it to be nice, you want people to enjoy it. Oh, your <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. It's the truth. People? What? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever? Okay, well, that goes to something I'll talk about later. But. Oh, yeah. Shantae's got something fun to talk about. Right. Stay, stay <laughs> with it. Stay tuned. <laughs> want to hear what she has to say. Research. I do a lot of research in this really PhD. Uh, we'll bypass it very quickly on earmuffs for another five seconds. Uh, <laughs> menstruation, it keeps regular, it keeps you more regular. So if someone's irregular on it, just having sex regular keeps your period regular. For everybody on Instagram, I'm going to plug you in so you don't run out of battery. <laughs> Jump over to Facebook. Facebook, you guys are good. Mm-hmm. And then just immunity. Here's proven people take less sick leave when they have sex more often. You get that one or two times a week. We actually get more white blood cells, more T cells, more antibodies. So there's actually measurable benefits of it, and not just people are happier because they're having sex when you go to work. So that wasn't one of my first thoughts. Is, well, if you're happy, if you're, you're happy, happy you know. exactly. If I'm happy, I'm still not going to work. <laughs> you don't go to work. We play. I live at Functionized. Functionized does not work. It's play. And you will never work a day in your life if you enjoy what you do. Exactly. Sorry about the earthquake, everyone on Instagram. <laughs> Not really. It's going to rock your world, that's all. And those on Instagram are already sideways. <laughs> what? Wave, wave, <laughs> wave. <laughs> wave, wave. <laughs> Hello, everybody. You're sideways. And the uh, solution for that is just turn your phone. <laughs> oh, make my, make my screen big. Make make your phone big, John. Make your phone big. <laughs> turn it. So, um, we'll go with general pain. So, I'm going to short answer. This one is having sex actually increases your pain tolerance. Short term and a little bit different uh, research so it can change long term. But that's a little bit more iffy, but again, it's good for you. Why not? So, Prolactin, why not? Oxytocin? Oxytocin is a big one on this one because oxytocin does increase your pain threshold. So, does that, actually have, does that have to do with like suckling while having childbirth? As a way to go into death from this one and make you more your most fun? I've delivered multiple babies myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me, it does, like, the big things that's been shown is uh, headaches, uh, cramps. Those are the two big ones. Oh, was that another magic word for you, cramping? Like during menstruation? It, help <laughs> 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 it does. Quit it! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> He'll cut his brakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, the okay. oxytocin is the big part of it. It does pain balance. It's also that closeness feeling. The love hormone, happy hormone, it makes you feel bonded and close to people. And it increases a lot with orgasm. You also get a lot of this from hugging, holding. So this is the uh, excuse for cuddling afterwards. Is Keep the bond strong and decrease the pain. Don't like to cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> she does not like to cuddle. Uh, cuddling aside, heart disease. There we'll go. Woo, less ear muffins. So as long as you're healthy enough or find the right position away that sex, you don't have a heart attack, it is that those who actually do get heart attacks, if you have sex at least once a week, you're fifty percent less to die from it. Big plus. Big plus. Don't die. That's why you're heart it doesn't show to help prevent them, it prevents death from them. Okay, 
I have a heart attack like once every couple of days. You know that. But I'm not dead yet. Right. Booyah. Zach. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> happy life, happy life. There you go. Healthy life. Um, huh? Huh? Cancer. Stress helps prevent cancer. I gotta be careful the way I say it, but it lowers the chances of cancer. Which um, kind of cancer? Why, why did lawyers, sorry lawyers, I'm not sorry, why do lawyers exist that we have to watch what we say when it comes to that? That's the lawyer. Kim. Kim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to watch what I say. Um, the answer to that one is mostly hormonal cancers. So prostate cancer, breast cancer, ones that are hormonal related because again, sex regulates hormone, the same method that helps regular menses. Um, so the prostate's the big one we're talking about. <laughs> well, breastfeeding for at least five years helps lower your chances of breast cancer, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a game of truth. And it also lowers the incidence of sex. What? Having children? No. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nursing. Nursing. Alright, it's hot and heavy and awesome with this hot girl. And now this hot girl has breast milk coming out. Just saying. There's actually reasons to have sex during pregnancy, and we'll get there too. So. I know, I know. <laughs> during it's it's awkward. It's awkward. Yes, during pregnancy. It, I know. Better I know. benefits without those weird plastic things about condoms. What? Yes. Yeah. What again? These are the things that you put on bananas. Sex is better without condoms. That's what Doctor Mike told <laughs> What are these What's things the that you keep on talking about? <laughs> I gotta a, look up this word. Your penis covered. <laughs> What is that? Why would you want to do that? Sitting on the ground. Um, Ew. <laughs> Chewing gum? What? <laughs> they are very different things. For those who aren't aware, condoms is not the same as chewing gum. <laughs> That's what it's a porn <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. No positions. <laughs> Motivation and stuff is stretch it out. Stretch it out. Just stretch it out. Okay. Okay. What are we on next? Why don't we talk about why is sex different? Do you think? And I'll ask both genders here. In confidence between males and females. Males, it's often this badge of honor. Where females, not as much. There's a negative connotation and label associated with females that have a lot of sex. Yeah, there's a huge social difference about it. And even in this world of, you know, online dating and hookups, and you have your tenders and you have your whatevers, and you're specifically looking for that, females still get that bad rap of you're just a blank or a blank or a blank. A tramp versus congrats. Huge. Should they be cuddling? No, should they be cuddling? Would that help the female? I mean, what is it that... I'm going to ask this uh, PhD. What is it that gives a woman confidence after the act of sex versus wishing it never happened? And, because you get all these benefits. We're talking about the pluses it, it, here. It comes down to control. This is a physiological versus psychological thing. Correct. So it comes down to control. If you are drunk at a bar and you go home with someone that you don't know, and then you wake up in that walk of shame the next day, you are not in control of that situation. Versus you go into a bar with your friend saying, I'm going to bring somebody home with me. Now you're in control. Now you don't regret what you do because you set out to do that. Makes sense. How about on the flip side, when you're married? Is there a confidence factor afterward? I don't think so. You're not confident, more confident afterward than before then? I don't know. It's an interesting question. And we're live, by the way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of this comes down to again, the endorphin and testosterone release. I mean, just like normal exercise, we do get endorphins where you, you feel better about yourself. You don't, you're not really any different than you were an hour ago, but you feel like you are. You look, you look like you are. So we get that confidence. And then uh, there's a the testosterone okay, boost. You do have me thinking 
both of them. I never think about this in a confidence way. I just have fun. <laughs> Air fry. <laughs> Why do you think I run out and uh, go check on the kids? I can give them all high fives. Yeah. That's wrong. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's even a little. I mean, we know how they got here, but you know, See? they are all. You know, we're not going to say anything because it's probably a message of interest. But we do know how they all you got here. You just did. did. Yeah, you did. Like, what did you high five before? Making a sister. So next. <laughs> <laughs> There are no more sisters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, practice makes perfect, and you guys can argue that. They are perfect. perfect. In a relationship, let's yes. talk about couples, divorce, sex. Um, you know, do couples that have divorce. So, I mean, the whole uh, individuals after they divorce, they have less sex, more sex, same, doesn't it matter? Correlation versus causation, can't tell, but people, when they're, after people divorce, they look back on studies and they're like, People who divorced had less sex than people who stuck together. So I mean, for what that's worth, I mean, again, we'll go physiological first. Uh, there's a lot of hormones that go flying when you have sex, and it doesn't make you feel closer to them. So I believe that makes a huge difference. If you don't like your husband or your wife, you are not going to take your clothes off for them, and you don't want them touching you. And if you don't like your husband or wife, serious question, why are you with them in the first place? Mm -hmm. Well, what got you together with them in the first place? Obviously, at one time, you had to be goo goo over each other to walk down that aisle with your friends and your family saying, I do. Right? And right. if you grow apart, then you grow apart, and whatever happens, happens. But yes, the likelihood of you wanting to have sex with a spouse that you no longer want to be with is few and far between. I mean, it is a big part of relationships. As much as some people might want to undermine it, it's actually, I mean, at least I feel incredibly important. Right? It's one of those things that you're in most cultures of beliefs, it's really only doing it with that person. So it is something that's true. Oh, I can't wait to get to this list. I <laughs> uh oh. We're almost, we're almost there. We're almost, we're almost there. there. But on the health benefit side, is that the health benefits that we have and will mention are actually increased if you're with the same person in the family compared to if you're with, you can have sex eight times a week with two different people, you get more health benefits from having that same one person. Would you say that one more time aloud to everybody? Do what happens. I would like to hear yeah. numbers and words, and it's hard. But <laughs> health benefits. I promise you, he's <laughs> really wicked smart. So, having. Good old one, obviously. Yeah. 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 The health benefits and actually even psychological benefits are increased with those that have sex with the same person once a week compared to eight different people eight times a week. So, I mean, consistency matters. So, biohacking, living functionized, pick one hobby. And or super stick hungry. with a hottie. Or super hottie. Super hungry. <laughs> hormones. We were talking about hormones a little bit. What are some of these hormones? These magical hormones. These magical sensors of the body that literally tell your body how to act and what to do. What are they? Let's do the obvious one first. Testosterone. So, I mean, anyone who's listened to our podcast and seminars normally know that it's been kind of a big deal for muscle growth, bone growth. Um, again, competitive edge, motivation, and it you get a huge testosterone boost with active sex and orgasm, not with masturbation, because it actually fires different parts of your brain. Uh, the I like calling it the winning center, the reward center of your brain, flares off when you have sex, but not when you masturbate. This idea of I just score, you just won something. It's not the same. Your brain does fire differently, different parts of the nucleus of humans and other centrals of the brain are a little different. Like we get a bigger testosterone booster from actually having sex. And again, increases libido, a lot of good stuff with it. You uh, actually, this is sort of a tangent, but men actually get the same sense of testosterone boost watching your favorite football team score for Yeah, because you put yourself in the place of you won. You yeah. Yeah. Wow. Scientific research. So you do want someone to return to serve. I watch football while having sex. As long as you uh, win. Like, Double win! That's like a Sunday, uh... <laughs> 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 after church. So... Uh, <laughs> so oxytocin was another one we mentioned so already. Talk about I think we did so normal. pretty well on that one. Um, prolactin. So, I was actually asked this one last week about why we feel sleepy after sex. And it's prolactin. It makes you relax, makes you comfortable, and does actually 
increase in firing on the uh, on the and veterinary stuff that Jim will just bro. That's right, that. you're around here. Jim doesn't have to roll his eyes as much. But um or it doesn't just doesn't matter. But <laughs> it fires differently. I gotta go and uh take care of Kyrus right now. Let's let the hair out. Let's <laughs> never <laughs> out. <laughs> um it estrogen increases as well and We'll just go back to the earmuff fault. That's where the estrogen comes into play. And also helps with heart disease on women's components. So estrogen and testosterone work similarly, in this case, on uh, the opposite gender for helping with heart disease and heart problems. And then the big one that goes with immunity and depressing. DHEA! You got it. Booyah! Oh! You just won. Testosterone increase. Woohoo! Bring up sex tonight. I just get my testosterone because I got an answer right. But it's Friday. <laughs> it's a day that ends in a Y. And you're drinking on a day that ends in a Y. <laughs> we'll go real quick neuro on that one of the THEA increase of cheese acronym. BDNF. Um, Brain derived nootropic factor? Thank you. You're welcome. So that's the one that does a lot. I like brain neural stuff too. So help. <laughs> help prevent Alzheimer's, help prevent MS, help prevent depression. By having sex. Well, oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Who knew? Well, it really is beneficial. <laughs> mm, not quite as much as it is fun. I can't do that one. But it's really good for you. Good. This is where you turn to Shantae and say talk to us. About I am so curious about this. Shantae's got some information for us on. It's so fun. Okay. And it's psychological research. sex. But Let's go. This is, this is psychological. This is, you know. Straight up research studies. Okay, there are seven common fantasies that men and women both experience. Yes. So the most common sexual fantasies. This, this one, most from seven down to one. You want to go backwards? Yes. Let's go backwards. Let's, let's go backwards. backwards. Let's are we going to back this up? Let's do the top ten. Letterman's gonna, top ten. Okay, we're going to back it up. Okay, we're going to start with seven. Yeah, back it up. I'm going to back it up. All right. Should show some videos. Why don't cancel the videos? <laughs> Put on the music. Okay, no. So seven would be uh, what? What do they call it? Like gender and sexual fluidity. So cross dressing. People do it. I don't know the feel, but they do it. All right. Um, one of the fun ones, though, is a heterosexual woman has more homoerotic fantasies about other women than men would have about other men. So women fantasize about other women because of the sexual fluidity of their nature. So is that why, like, in Once Upon a Time, you got Dorothy hooking up really with blondes? I really don't understand why there's lesbians in Once Upon a Time, the show of children. That is awkward, watching it with your um, 12 year old daughter, but we're going to go past that. So, But if Once Upon a Time is made for just adults, then... So if you fantasize about other women and you're a woman, it is completely normal. Other women do too. Well, okay. Although it's socially acceptable. Though. It is right. socially acceptable. You see it on Disney. <laughs> <laughs> you can kiss other women. Um, it's okay. Go back to undergrad. Who is your best friend? Who is your dorm mate? Right? You know, okay. What was it? Six. Work for me. Six. six uh, Mike's mom may have tweeted by then. <laughs> six. Okay, six is non monogamous relationships. Ah, okay. meaning people fantasize about either swinging or having a partner that is not their monogamous partner. So, you know, the whole open relationship concept, you know, you have permission to go do whatever you want. You're not necessarily having sex with multiple people at the same time. You're having sex with somebody that is different than your traditional partner. That is number six. Fascinating. It is, right? So but, your immune, but your immune system is number six. It's not going to be boosted as high Correct. That is quite as possible. the first one. Number five is passion, romance, and intimacy. So you know those movies where the, the TV shows, it's just hot, and steamy, and all their emotional needs lead to this crazy sex. That's number five. Big books, Fifty Shades of Grey. Pretty much, exactly. You know, watch Grey's Anatomy and Eric. So that's why you don't come to bed too. All right, go anyway. watch another episode. I'm gonna die. I don't want to do that anymore. You are kind of my McSteamy though, or my McDreamy. Your McDreamy. Oh, the, is there a McSteamy? There's a McSteamy. McSteamy. You're my McDreamy though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But he does. 
But it's okay. You did it. So we're good. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go number four. Number four. So taboo activities. I fetishes. think this is a taboo uh, entire functionalized so Friday night. Right. <laughs> so fetishes, you know, some people like feet, some people like pop wax all over them, some people want to do it Bear in... traps on your hands. Right? You know, you could definitely do that. <laughs> um, voyeurism, that's a big one. You want to watch people get undressed, there's those peeping toms that you don't know who's staring at you in the locker room or whatnot. Is um, that or are we keep the lights on here at 9 o'clock at night? Jeez, I didn't know that. So voyeurism, you know, either watching your partner with somebody else or watching things that you shouldn't be watching, you know, people like that. It, I'm not going to say normal, but it's common. Not to ever go on a rant or tangent because we never do this, but I actually read online about two weeks ago, we had the whole, you know, corona, everyone's trying to stay inside. The first strip clubs that were open were drive through strip clubs. So for the people. Fascinating. They drive through where? I, it is interesting. Um, what are you talking to the next one? I need to sip the one. Okay, more than two. Okay, you're welcome. To share. Um, so number three, novelty adventure. What is a novelty adventure? Novelty. Oh. Novel. oh. <laughs> no. Okay, my number three is novelty adventure. <laughs> so something that's you know, novelty. Um, so it could be like changing a position, going into a setting. Some people want to have car sex. Some people want to have sex outside. Some want to have sex in the ocean. So something that's different. So it's an adventurous act. Um, the risk, actually. There was some else. One of those things. What haven't we done? Um, <laughs> oh, number two. Okay. <laughs> Well, sidetrack, the sense of risk actually also it increases a lot of this. It stuff. certainly Like the hormonal boost that exactly comes that and that the risk to reward. Where can I go? Am I going to get caught? It definitely heightens a sexual experience. Right. Hormones sure. raise, fun raises. Like Step, fight, or flight. So the adrenaline gets going, and it's just a really good time, um, according to the research. <laughs> Research report. <laughs> um, psychology today with a lot of different it is, research yes, articles. Absolutely. With APA. APA. Yeah. All right. Um, so number two. This is four. four but two. So. Uh, BDSM. So really? Yes. Yeah, really? I've not seen that coming. Yes. Um, yeah. People want to be. Um, BDSM. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, there's a control factor, and more women. I, I have the stats um, behind me. More women prefer BDSM <laughs> over any other sexual fantasy. No pain, no gain. So tie you up, uh, slap you with um, <laughs> flogging. Um, you know. Congrats, <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the <fit> floggings. Um, <laughs> interesting, right? <laughs> So the rougher the better. <laughs> Anywho, number one. Number, number one. one. That's two again. I'm just really excited. Separate. <laughs> <laughs> number one. one. One also. What is it? What you shouldn't have said. That. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's multi-partner sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So the number one common sexual fantasy is multi-partner sex. So not act, but fantasy. Because that's a huge difference. So if you have your threesomes, your you know multi-partner sex, sex, your orgies, your, your big orgies, orgies right? The orgy Roman in public Greek. with getting the crap beat out of you. What else is there? With more women involved, but one at least one is that your uh, significant other. One is your significant other. At least once a week. This is, this is not a prescription or medical advice. This is just oh stop it. <laughs> what do you, you want to say? It's medical advice. I don't think medical advice, but, uh... It is functionalized advice. <laughs> Where's our attorney? <laughs> we need help. So there it is. So if you are one of the many that fantasize about any of these top seven sexual fantasies, you are not alone. And just because it's a fantasy doesn't mean it has to be a reality. Very true. Very so sometimes that's actually a very good point. That's it actually is. good advice. Very, very so good advice. so naughty talk in the bedroom can go a long way without actually physically acting out on these impulses and thoughts. So talk it out with your partner because you can make 
a lot of gains in your sex life um, just by exploring other things verbally. Which you know brings me to another point. We talked about so orgasms so before. Talk to them back about so talk to your partner is big. Right. And talking to your partner is big. You know, there's been back and forth research on the female orgasm, right? So many women can't have them. Many women need extra stimulation to have them. It used to be said where if you focus too much on the act of physically having an orgasm, it would make you less likely to have one. You know, we've read this in research journals, you hear it on TV, tabloids, whatever. Well, new research shows that if you don't think about it, you're less likely to have one. I feel food. Exactly. So women need to embrace the act of enjoying the sexual nature, enjoying sex with your partner, and don't necessarily force yourself to say, I have to have an orgasm, but know that you could have an orgasm and be aware. You say just be in the moment? Exactly. 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 So if you put too much pressure, yes, it's overstimulation, you're overthinking things. If you don't recognize that it's a realistic opportunity and that it could happen, you're also limiting your exposure to having an orgasm. This would be an interesting topic, probably for a whole new day. Remember the um, Healthy Happy Hour we did on, we'll call it nootropics, hallucinogens? Yes. What would the idea be, because it's been found that psilocybin and LSD have helped individuals either kick habits or have no experiences, even change who they are altogether if they focus on that one thing, to utilize a substance such as that, obviously under proper medical care, um, such as LSD, right. allow that experience to happen knowing who you're with and just be one with that and perhaps Don't learn how yes. to experience the female orgasm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So they we say you know, most them. orgasms are mental for women, and I mean, in all honesty, they are for men too. It just it's, I mean, again, we said it's backstage, but right. to be honest, men are easier to have the component of it. If yeah, it doesn't they're, happen, they're probably something, there's something, something going on. wrong. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's the idea of again. I remember back in the time, we'll say early years of it. Of like, if you want to try that far or not, you try to think of not, you try to think of something else. Because the old people, Betty White. Yeah. Betty White. <laughs> Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <the whole> day. <laughs> so when you were talking about, you know, it's easy for a woman organ to think about it. That made sense to me because, you know, the standard thing for guys is to not think about the last long. That's the same thing. It's opposite. Like that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Uh, Margaret Thatcher made a cold day. Look around the room. Think about anything and everything else. Let's go do dishes. Yep, yep, yep. And switch oh, positions. <laughs> And something else. <laughs> spasm on top. Yeah. All those good spasms are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk to Kim after this, aren't we? No. <laughs> what in oh, particular? Not that. <laughs> Not like I have no apology. But next topic. Are we done? <laughs> yeah, we're done. We're. Let's move on with our Friday night. I'm going to probably park the Hummer in front of the police station for no reason whatsoever. Why? Why would you do that? Oh, that's what number on the list? <laughs> oh, um, oh, exactly. Oh. Oh, those are good. Um, All right, let, let, let's make this uh, conclusion a quick award. Ah, quickies. <laughs> quickies work. You like said, thanks right. for time. Let's wrap it up. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Not bubblegum. What's <laughs> They're different. So on Monday, I'm expected to be with Brad Kearns, a professional triathlete, live on Facebook to talk about anything and everything about human performance. On Tuesday night, we will be back here on Facebook and Instagram for I, uh, Healthy Happy Hour. Shantae will figure out something about that. I, I, I will be MIA on Tuesday. Shantae will be Shantae? Well, well, you don't have a lot of differences on that one, no. Yes. Um, Friday, Shantae will be back and we'll with Dr. Mike, and we'll do something here for... Freaky Fun Friday Functionized. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> we can add that into any of these. <laughs> and uh, in the meanwhile, we'll also be starting production on uh, the documentary Keto Size Me. Have you ever seen Super Size Me? Think Keto. And think this is going to be freaking awesome because we have a test subject. And think McDonald's for a month with Dr. Mike. Yeah, we found some... Uh... 
some guy who's really new to see Drew Rickers from McDonald's for a moment. Who also happens to be borderline, probably over the top genius. So, probably. I was going to give you a gesture, but we're online. And in a couple weeks, we will also be doing Healthy Happy Hour with One Hope Wine. Hello, yes, Lauren. Lauren. And we will be raising funds as well uh, for a very, very, very good cause. I'm going to put all this and blast this all out. So, the more One Hope you buy, the better. And we'll get into a lot more detail on that. So. Keep watching. Thank Tell you. your friends. Yeah. Go have Please. sex. <laughs> Share this with as many people as you know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And the functionized. The functionized. <laughs> Love y'all. Thank you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.